hello thank you so much for being here i hope that you are safe and doing well welcome back to another j fashion mythbusters video where we bust some myths about J fashion. This is the series where I have guests come to talk about a style or topic that they are knowledgeable on so that we can all learn and grow together. Today's topic is Mori K. I have Marianella and Didi with me to help explain what it's all about. At first glance, people will often confuse Mori K with cottage core. Cottage core aesthetic has been super popular online over the past couple of years. Articles say that economic forces and other challenges facing young people may have been a significant driver of this trend along with Gen Z and Millennials emphasis on sustainability and when people started working from home during the pandemic. But what we are going to learn about today is Mori K, which is a style that originated in Japan around the mid 2000s. Mori is the Japanese word for forest and that's basically what the whole vibe of the fashion is. Is. It spurred some subcultures like Hamake, which is ocean style, and Yamake, which is mountain style. During the early days, Mori quickly began to gain traction as a popular street style in Harajuku. So you'll see lots of street snaps. There were even Mori magazines and even Mori fashion brands. However, as we know in the world of fashion, styles can unfortunately come and go. So around the 2010s, Mori slowly started fading. Mori blogs got deactivated and smaller Mori brands disappeared. But in the year 2023, there are still lots of people who participate in the style. So I will be talking to two Mori K lovers today and diving deep into what Mori K is all about. Let's go ahead and jump right into the interview. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. For those who might not know who you are, please introduce yourself. So, you know, like your name, where you're from, if you're comfortable sharing, what fashion you wear, and what you do. So, let's start with Marianella. Hello. So, my name, my real name is Marianella, but people know me as Miwako. So, I tend to talk about Morike a lot. <laughs> Weird outfits and just spread the fashion on my social media. And I'm from Puerto Rico, by the way. <laughs> Yay. I live in, in the States, so yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right, what about you, Didi? Hey, everybody. I'm Didi Kayoko, and I live in Ontario, Canada. So I'm very far away from the both of you, but I absolutely love and I adore Mori K fashion. So that's that's what I do right now. I just, I like to, you know, share content about Mori K fashion and talk about Mori K fashion. And I currently am putting together a Mori K fashion magazine that's on my Instagram page. Yes, it's so good. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, if anyone hasn't seen Mori Magic yet, you have to check it out. I'll obviously have the link in the description, but oh my gosh, like just looking at each page, you can see how much love you put into it. So I, I'm so honored to have the both of you here Yay. today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's sort of talk about and go back to how the both of you found out about J Fashion and Mori K. So, you know, when did you find out about it? Like how long ago that was? Um, yeah, let's start with Didi. How long have you been wearing J Fashion and Mori K for? Oh my goodness. Well, I have to backtrack just a little bit. So bear with me. But the first time I found out, I found out about Harajuku fashion and J fashion was from actually from Gwen Stefani, the pop singer. Oh my God. Um, when she came out with her tour featuring the Harajuku girls. And mind you, like I've been watching anime for years. Like I think I started watching anime when I was 13. I won't tell you my real age because then people <laughs> like, what? You're that old? Anyhow, um, that at least has to be um, maybe between 17 to 19 years watching anime and then following Gwen Stefani and her music and the Harajuku girls. And then um, I noticed the way that they were dressing, like their outfits and their styles. And I started to really look into that. At that time, we didn't have like Google Chrome and all that stuff I had. I'm really dating myself if I say this, but we had like Windows <laughs> 
NLP and Netscape Navigator. And yeah, so it was way, 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 way back. Um, but I found out about the Harold Jugal Girls, and then I that linked me to J Fashion. And I actually started out in the J Fashion community as Fairy K, mm. uh, pastel Fairy K to be exact. And that was about maybe 10, 11 years ago. Mm. And about three years ago, I went to the Toronto Harajuku Fashion Walk and I met a Gyaru. And I, you know, she invited me into the Gyarusa and I got involved in being Gyaru. And I started off by being like a Hime Gyaru for three years. And it was last year that I decided to kind of venture out of the Gyaru community and look for something else that was more in my niche because I moved out to the countryside here in Ontario. And I came across Mori K. And I went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And the first information and YouTuber that I found from Mori K was actually Miwako. <gasps> and I remember messaging her and I was asking her like a million and one questions, a million and one questions. I followed her on Instagram. I creeped her a little bit and I learned most of what I know about Mori K actually now from Miwako. So I've only been doing Mori K fashion for almost a year now. So thank you, Miwako. You're the best. Ooh, <laughs> oh my gosh. It means a lot, you know, to know that I inspire someone. I'm not crying. It's just <laughs> makeup. It's makeup. <laughs> I know your videos are so good. They're so good. So, so good. Thank so yeah, you. that's a little bit of history about my J fashion history. Mm, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, you're welcome. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm kind of like, uh, how do I even say this? I'm similar to Didi. I'm like from 2000 something to not being so specific. I was in high school. <laughs> so back then I was starting to know everything about the internet, how we work. First time access in Puerto Rico, access to internet. So I didn't know anybody who liked a fashion. I was all about myself. So um, it wasn't until people started cosplaying. I think a lot of conventions started happening that I people started being interested more on J fashion. But I think if I saw something uh, during the, co the conventions, maybe it was like, you know, make, make cafe <laughs> outfits, t-shirt of anime, um i think that's about it <laughs> so online when i used to do my research uh, most of the stuff that i saw was gyaru lolita and visual k actually my username on instagram it literally is miwako vk visual k lolita um... on the score hj which means arayuku and hotmail which is my business <laughs> i had that since back then so anyways, uh, so I did not know how to look for stuff. Um, we did not have thrift stores. We don't have Goodwills still up to this day. We have maybe Salvation Army, but I barely knew that um, five years ago. <laughs> and the spots that I know currently that sell thrift store items are really scattered around the island. So it was really impossible. My experience with thrift stores were basically like, after a neighbor or a friend or family will they will send me a huge bag of clothes like used mm. clothing and i will see oh maybe i can use this uh, we, we were you know we were tricky so i did not know how to look for stuff online so anyways i just had always little things about Mori. i i think i did not know the name of Mori. i just saw it and i remember that i uh i mean i remember now that the images were from the early, the, the fashion from Taobao and the kawaii ones. Those are the ones, like, the ones that are, are actually pretty easy to find right now. So uh, it wasn't until I had my first job, like, that I started buying online and I started buying stuff on AliExpress. There's a lot of stores that did not send anything to Puerto Rico either. So that's why mm -hmm. it was really difficult for me. I didn't know anybody from USA. So yeah, and I started experimenting with J fashion and that, that's when that's 
in back in 2015 or 2016 when I started my channel. Um, I started, I think it was with pastel. I just tried to experiment a little bit with of everything. I just had a bunch of stuff. I, I just had no idea, no guide. Uh, so, and yeah, I just found out, uh, I saw the pictures, the old pictures of Modi. And I was like, dad. That is the fashion. <laughs> and then I just, a lot of like boom stuff <laughs> came to my head because I just remember everything from when I was in high school. So long story short, I've been <laughs> trying to dress up and talk about body for the past three to four years. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's how long I think I've been very, very more serious about body. Okay? So yay! Yay. well yeah that's how i found out about you too was through your youtube channel ah. and it has a lot of really great information so if anybody's Thank looking you. for more information highly recommend but for someone who's never seen or heard of mori k before how would you describe you know like what the word mori means and what is mori k exactly mori means forest um girl girl <laughs> so k when, when we say mori k is like forest style so anyway it, it was a fashion movement they uh, made um pioneered by women who did not want wanted to follow the current trends fashion for women so they did not want to follow gyaru lolita like or too cute or too hyper feminine they had no desire or also of like wearing something that will attract men mm -hmm. they wanted something comfortable and um, relaxing so Mori in general is the middle, <laughs> not too sweet, not super hyper feminine and modest as well. It has a mixture of natural, folklore, boho, ethnic, vintage, retro, with a little bit of touch of quirkiness. <laughs> and the, the fashion is influenced by Northern Europe uh, from their uh, Norwegian forest, ethnic clothing and folk stories tales folk folk tell stories i don't know how you say it but yeah i think i answer mm. correctly right. yeah it's, it's a lot of info yeah yeah i mean i feel like mori has a pretty long history but what about you Didi? like um when you explain mori k to somebody who's brand new to it how would you explain it well like for example how i explain it to like my family and friends because when they see me dress like okay cottage core and i'm like right. no <laughs> not cottage core <laughs> i know we're gonna get into that a little bit but i really tried to simplify it for them and i just said listen mori means forest and the k like muako said it's just the style um word in japanese so i was like listen it's just an individual who dresses like they live in the forest mm -hmm. right mori is all about fashion it's not an aesthetic mm -hmm. like the other one that we're going to talk about. Um, <laughs> but this is, it's all about fashion. So everything about the appearance is like you're living in the forest. Mm -hmm. And I tried, that is my simplest answer. Even to like my family and my friends were like, that's an interesting outfit. What is that from? <laughs> and I'm like, well, that, that, that. And that's it. <laughs> that's all I say. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's interesting. I'm like, yeah, that's it. That's all. The forest girl. That's what yeah. I want to look like. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Like, you know, just looking at the outfit, you can definitely see that. Um, but like I was saying earlier, you know, I do know that Morike does have a pretty long history. So mm -hmm. could the both of you share with me kind of how it started um, and, you know, where you found out like the information about how it started and stuff and then after that we can talk more about how it evolved and spread internationally but yeah let's just start from the very beginning of how it all started so who um are sorry so who feels more comfortable sharing about the history of M Muako? would you like to go ahead then yeah um baby i cannot see you very well but are you okay <laughs> yeah go ahead honey you're fine uh, okay 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 uh so <clears throat> so <laughs> the fashion was already worn by women uh, before it became popular it was more of an underground like small group of people who had a uh, similar taste um but it wasn't seen mm -hmm. on the streets of harajuku until 2009 when it reached popularity uh after 
they they uh you know they noticed that they like the same so they decided to make a group on the website called mixi which is a japanese version of facebook um a user named shoko was the leader of the group it, they did not have a name at that moment until the group um uh, the group did not have like a you know like a specific identity yet. They just were sharing photos of their outfits, uh, ideas, or everything that they like. And until one day, one of her friends uh, of Choco uh, told her like, "Hey, you look like you're from the forest," because she was sharing all the time her outfit. Mm -hmm. And that's when she said like, "You know what? We already have enough people for this uh, style. I think we can name it something." So she named it Money Girl, and everybody went, Way! <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, the group started um, um, growing. So uh, little by little, the group started growing through po popularity. <clears throat> and then by the age of the year, age, the 2008, it reached 35,000 um, followers. By 2009, she decided to make a book which is the Modi Bible. Oh, whoa! <laughs> yeah, this is the second one I have. I wanna make uh, give one for a giveaway. Uh, so, anyway, so this is the book of Choco. She never show her face. She's incognito. <laughs> mm. uh, so she decided to release a book with uh, showcasing her outfits, uh, tips, and um, things that she would consider um, not really rules, but she mentioned things that hey. Um, these are the things that I like. She shared her preferences and things that things that she she said. Um, you know, this is what I think a Modi girl would look like or would like, and that's how the whole idea of Modi uh, was made. So, but 2009, when the book was released, it got a lot more popularity, and even magazines and animes. Starting to release content about Money K, <laughs> uh, and of course, fashion brands. So, yeah, that's how it happened. And by 2012, I don't know if I should already say that by 2012, everything went <laughs> mm. <laughs> started dying, but yeah, the fashion started uh, changing more to elegant and sporty. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but the people who were mostly onto this fashion were college students. So also by 2012, those people already started working in corporate jobs. So they needed to wear more professional outfits. Mm -hmm. um, so the fashion started changing, the brand started changing, brand started dying. And it wasn't that popular and it started dissolving, but we are there. We are here. We're yes. still <laughs> People remain. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and then it started becoming popular um, online. Does the question also refer to how we he got international? Because I forgot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So okay. the second part is sort of how it evolved <laughs> and spread yeah. online. Because I think what I had read was now it's more popular internationally compared to how it was like when it started. It, you know, because it started in Japan, and now more people internationally are wearing more K. So I don't yeah, know. Is that is I that true? Yeah, it's thanks to the internet, literally <laughs> internet. So uh, when it was dying off, like there were people already overseas who are really like fashion and follow Modi K, um, who who like Modi K from the very beginning. So they, uh, they were um, how do you say this? Um, they were up to date. Like when you are a fashionista and you love fashion, you're up to date about everything. You follow everybody, every page, and they started making their own blogs on Life Journal, which was the most popular blog at that time. So they were posting her their outfits and translating a lot of the articles that they had back uh, back then. When they noticed also that the fashion was starting to die, then from Life Journal, when Life Journal was starting to die, it moved everything to Tumblr. When Tumblr mm. started to die, it moved everything to Instagram, and now we're here on YouTube trying to make it <laughs> make it survive. So yeah. that's I think that's. Uh, all the information that I know so far, I of course I I don't know everything. This is all based on 
all the information that I, all the information, all the investigation that I have tried to do, uh, do, 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 <laughs> do, do. So, yeah. Mm -mm. Awesome. And some blocks exist today, uh, but a lot of them have been shut down. So that's it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I missed that last line. What, what was it that you uh, said again? So I, I forgot to mention that even though uh, they archive a lot of the blocks, uh, some blocks still exist today. Mm. They're very small. They, they're, they just keep repeating the same stuff. Like it's very outdated. But yeah, a lot of them just shut down. Actually, I just found out yesterday it broke my heart but in 2019 the original blog of choco was uh shut down and it just i feel like my heart just broke in half <laughs> no. i could not find it on archive i think i'm gonna uh, ask my boyfriend and see if he, if he can do some <laughs> <laughs> some hacker hacker year, hacker <laughs> all the blogs disappearing um because even just last night i had been researching um i think it was like blog posts that misako aoki the lolita model had on i think the website was called asian beat and it had all this information but last night when i went back to look at the article the website they're like well sorry like we closed march 31st 2023 and i was like what the wow. <sighs> yeah it, it it's really sucks especially because you know you want to learn all of this history and i feel like that's you know this is an important thing to learn with all of these different fashion styles and cultures and because they exist on the internet and it's not like a physical thing it's it can it, it's easy for it to just like disappear overnight so yeah. uh, i find i think that it's so important and that's why i want to continue doing these sorts of videos talking to people who are in these styles so that we can pass on these fashions to the younger generation and share the information because like you know all the blogs are disappearing and also to continue passing it on because like you said when uh, the people who first started they were in college and then went started working and like who was there to you know continue passing we'll pass along the, the torch yeah yeah <laughs> we, so we want to continue passing on the torch and to continue spreading this like love for j fashion with everyone and yeah because i mean i know sometimes it can be kind of hard to like find information since it's such a niche thing all these different styles so yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy to talk to the both of you today. By the way, Didi, do you have anything to add regarding mm -hmm. the history of oh my gosh, no. Absolutely not. Miwako is an encyclopedia of information. <laughs> I could sit and listen to her talk all day. But yeah, it's no. Every, <laughs> every, like, every nook and cranny of the history just came out of her. It's even surprising. Even some things that I even forgot she was able to mention. So no, I think she did a great job by speaking about the history thank you thank you <laughs> so you were showing that book um earlier and i had read about something called like the official mori girl checklist is it in that book mm -hmm. i mean oh! i cannot I you can even use Google Translate, and um, thankfully, it's actually actually accurate. Okay. <laughs> Google has done a very good job. Mm. Uh, I don't know where is it. I mean, uh, yeah, here. It's all, yeah, it's Whoa. all text. But um, obviously, I uh, right now I just cannot tell you everything that it says. But it's not like uh, in a strict guidelines like Lolita, and I'm only going to use it as an example. Please don't. <laughs> I love Lolita, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot. <laughs> sorry, it is a lot. Like I mentioned earlier, Choco did a list because people were like, you know, how do you interpret, uh, interpret, uh, interpret, <laughs> interpret, uh, Modi girl fashion? Like, you know, and she, with all of her preferences, she said, you know, I like ponchos. I like to wear a line dresses like fluffy um shapeless dresses i like this brand i like this i like that so everything was based on her ideas and her preferences and also things like i would like to visit scandinavia because that's uh the base uh inspiration i love 
retrofloral patterns and so on. So basically, it's just like you said, I think checklist is just like, I, I like this, this, and this, and this. So it's like it, uh, to see if you could relate, I guess I, I could say to see if anybody could relate, like, hey, actually, I'm a Marie girl. I actually like this as well. And this, 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 this. It's not like the rules that you have to, like, follow to a T, right? It's just, like, no, it, it, suggestions, it, I guess, it, then? It tells you, actually, like, this is this is just my opinion. Mm. If, I, if I did not follow those guides, uh, I think my outfits will not have turned out like they look now. <laughs> mm. Because mm. you are lost like everybody have an idea of what the Mori girl is um but until you understand Shogo's mind you're like oh that's what she means or oh this type of pieces it does make sense it was used in northern europe or oh this oh that so when you follow her guides it really helps you a lot to make your outfits uh, I have done a lot of mistakes in the past <laughs> uh, because I wasn't really like, I was trying to just go YOLO, I guess. Um, mm. <laughs> but I noticed that something was lacking. And when I tried to incorporate a lot of the things that she mentioned, I was like seeing the big difference. Like, oh, mm. it's, it's coming together. I really think people should follow it, but you know, don't be too pressure, I guess, because it's going to, it's to help you. You know, mm. and nobody's going to <coughs> wear out your wrong shoes. <laughs> <laughs> wear your wrong shoes. Where is your leather bag? Where's your fluffy hat? Right. So. <laughs> like you said, trying to help you, it's like, it's sort of how I feel like too with Decora. Um, we have sort of like guidelines per se where you know the base of the fashion is just accessories but it's so cool mm. to see how everyone can get creative and create it in their own way so i think that's something similar with mori everybody's creating their own um different outfits based on like the base idea of it but yeah it's i have um is Choco still around by any chance? Like, do they no, still? No, I mean, the only thing that I knew was that blog. It was completely inactive. That's why the Mixi group was. She was mm. the uh, admin. Um, I she still she still has her account, but I don't see anything. Mm. Yeah, I was. I was. I, I just felt like <laughs> I can't even describe. Just seeing history saying goodbye out of nowhere it's like a relationship mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah no. oh man well who knows maybe one day they might pop up at a or someone else yeah <laughs> or <laughs> or someone else i think when it comes to the checklist i do believe that there are governing pieces, textures, materials that do differentiate Mori K from mm. the other sister substyles. Because mm. in the beginning, before I found Miwako's YouTube page and before I found her on Instagram and I was doing my research, if you just literally go to like AliExpress and type in Mori K, it's literally going to show you fashion from the other sister substyles. And the beginning of my journey as Mori K, my outfits, uh we're wrong let's just say they were they were not they were styled beautifully but i didn't look maury i thought i was looking maury but until i actually found the checklist and i found miwako's youtube and i followed the guideline i was like oh whoopsie wrong direction so i do think that a check the checklist does help yes you can kind of tweak it with your own flair and with your own type of textiles but there are guidelines there i don't want to say it's strict but mm -hmm. in a sense, it is kind of strict. Otherwise, you start looking like natural K or Yama K or Hama K. And you don't want to look like that if you're really trying to make sure that your mm -hmm. style is precise. And I'm a precise person, so it has to be perfect. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well, I think 
I will include the the checklist on the screen, like yeah. While um, yeah, we're we're talking about this information so that people can see. The next question that we have is more okay, more of a trend, established fashion, lifestyle, or aesthetic. So we kind of answered that earlier yeah. on, Didi. You know, yeah. Well, let, 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 let's dive deeper into that. So more okay, trend, established fashion, lifestyle, or aesthetic. So Didi, what do you think about it? More okay is absolutely fashion. Fashion, 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 fashion. When you look at an individual who decides to dress in Morike, the outfit has to speak to the style. Um, it, I, I say that because based on what I've seen, I know a lot of people would even in my own experience look at my outfit to be like, oh, so you're like cottage core. And I said, well, um, not exactly. I believe that. I can dress more K and live a cottage core lifestyle mm. um, just to be kind of like simple with the facts. Uh, um, but more K is <clears throat> all fashion. It's nothing else but fashion. So is it a fashion trend? Yes. Is it established? Absolutely. Why do I say that? It's because you can find so many um, stores or brands now that specifically cater to more K. And even um, some outside, like online international shops, like they'll have sections for kawaii fashion and they make sure that they specify like this is for Morike. And it's made shopping for me, which I love doing. Oh, my goodness. Shopping, shopping, shopping. It's been so easy for me to shop for more for Morike because they do have a specific collection just for Morike. Mm. Well, what do you think, Miwako? I have a... <clears throat> a similar um different opinion uh, so to me um i'm going to answer just in order first trend so to me uh mori started as a group of people sh just sharing the same ideals or tastes and it slowly became uh, as an established trend so it wasn't meant to be a trend since the movement was to go against the whole <laughs> trend trend cycle uh, mm -hmm. Just like many fashions, it's just uh, fast fashions, just the trends die down and everybody move on. But some folks uh, still uh, live within the Mori, uh, it still survive within the, some of the Mori folks. Uh, and also, it started as just a fashion, they all share similar ideas. And just like many other fashion trends, trends uh, they all die. Um, so even though they started with a fashion and they all share similar ideas, they still continue with it as part of their lifestyle. Um, yeah, so from fashion, it just became their thing, so their lifestyle. And um, about aesthetic, uh, because it all started with the imp impression of you look like you live in the forest. Um, the whole inspiration behind Scandinavia and the whole Northern Europe. If you group everything, every little aspect of it, like the motif, the, just a tiny little bit into a one, you can personally say that it became an aesthetic itself. Like, just mm. like Didi say, if when you, um, you know, when we talk about the, the, uh, the guide, the guideline, once you start putting all of these little details together and inspiration things into your outfit, you, you create the whole look, the whole aesthetic. So I also believe that it's an aesthetic. So. Yeah, due to that. <laughs> mm. I mean, it, I it sounds it like it's it's pretty much everything. Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can wear it as a fashion first and foremost, since you, a lot of it has to do with what you're wearing. But it also sounds like you could probably... Well, could you talk more about like the Mori lifestyle? Like, how do you incorporate it into your lifestyle? Mori has a similar style with cottage core. It's just slow down the whole uh japan back then was very i will say not chaotic but it was just moving way too fast and just i was talking about this with a friend but they had a similar experience just like us right now when the covid covid or pandemic started mm -hmm. we were exhausted with all so much changes so in their case, it's different because it was more about stress and, and you know, sadness, depression, they wanted to escape. But to us, it was like, um, you know, the whole idea of the clothing that, you know, I don't, I hate trends. I, I don't want to follow that. I just want to 
be by myself and I want to sleep, uh, live all by, by myself, living a slow life. So things like going to bookstores, going to cafe, doing little small things that doesn't really, you know, things that normally it will uh, take a while to consume. <laughs> like instead of watching a lot of TV, just, just an example, these are my examples. Instead of consuming stuff, like the internet a lot you read a book you go to the bookstore you go to the fairs you go to those places where you know time moves slowly uh, and it doesn't have anything to do with farming it's just taking it easy <laughs> mm. so yeah that's kind of like about about the lifestyle itself so it, all of those people who have the same fashion idea they kind of like having had the same idea like dude i just wanna i just wanna relax you know i just wanna live my life in peace so you know it became their lifestyles that's, that's mm -hmm. just who they are yeah so i mean who they, who they are yeah like people whenever they're kind of getting tired of the <laughs> internet you'll see them often say like i just want to run away and live in a in the forest yeah. in a little house like <laughs> i definitely do That's feel that <laughs> sometimes too but with with more k fashion like the fashion side of it what would you say dd are like the key elements in a more k outfit that is a very good question and that was a journey for me to be honest to kind of compile because i'm the type of person who is i live in the rabbit hole and i must perfect anything that i do it's just i'm a perfectionist so i believe that some key elements to a morike outfit i mean of course whether you're wearing a dress or a top and a skirt or trousers uh, it has to be loose fitting the ideal shape for Mori K would be a line mm -hmm. or potato sack for the lack of a better <laughs> word. The bigger, the better, right? Not so much more like having a feminine streamline, but more so just very loose fitting, very natural. So I believe like every piece that a Mori K person wants to put together for an outfit has to be loose fitting. That is the ultimate, ultimate rule. Must be uh, loose fitting. Now we get into the different things where it helps build the outfit. Uh, you want to incorporate crochet. Crochet is one of those materials that is very, very popular for Morike. Same thing with lace. Uh, I think I'm wearing a bit of lace today. Mm, cute. Uh, I'm actually wearing a one piece dress. It's featured on my Instagram page, um, but it has different tiers and layers. And I think layering, if Miwaka would agree, layering is very, very important to a Mori K outfit. Even mm. in the steaming hot, scorching summer, you must be layering. Otherwise, you're going to start looking like natural K or you're going to look like someone who's trying to pull off a cottage core aesthetic because the less layers you start looking more like the sub styles or the sister sub styles. So I believe like you need also your color palette is a very big thing, depending if you're doing, you know, Mori K or if you're doing one of the, uh, the sister sub styles like dark Mori K and then you get into like, the dark color palettes. But if you're doing like the, just the natural regular Mori K, the light softer color palettes, you know, your beige, your neutrals, your browns, your taupes, your greens, mm -hmm. your burgundies. Burgundy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Burgundies. I mean, um, having a little bit of... <laughs> Like your browns, like, you know, your neutral colors for your accessories. Uh, your hair accessories are a big thing, too. You know, um, incorporating lace. Um, sometimes a little bit of, like, forest animals. Bunnies and bears are, like, the biggest. See? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bunny on my necklace, but she fell off. Oh, no. Um, oh. Yeah. And then I'll put her back later. <laughs> Look like the biggest um, animals that are featured within the style. And of course, you know, when it comes to layering your outfits, stockings and socks that are have prints or patterns or like cute little designs on them. And then your shoes. I don't think a lot of people pay attention to shoes a lot, but I personally think shoes make or break the outfit. 
You have to be very specific when it comes to dressing Mary Kay when you pick the shoes. So, you know, shoes like Mary Jane's, whether they're completely flat, um, the color says a big deal. So black and browns, um, even like beaten up combat boots that are laced up. Those are really, really good for the style because you want to create that image that you live in the forest, you live in mm -hmm. the countryside, you live in the cottage, you, you're outside of the city life. Like Miwako said, it's all about slow living. It's all about being relaxed, being comfortable, but being fashionable, right? So it's not just like lazy clothes, but you're looking extremely put together, but in a way that not everybody would tend to do even your hair says a lot in the way that you style your hair for Mori K. so there are certain styles and certain hair clips you know brooches oh don't want to forget the brooches yet yeah, mine fell off as well oh no brooches are a big thing i'm just falling apart here oh, no. brooches, are, brooches are a big part of the Mori K um style and even like lace shawls or lace collar trims um, something like what I'm wearing right now today, mm -hmm. you can purchase those by themselves and add them to your outfit just to give mm -hmm. that hint that this is specifically Mori K and not the other sub styles or the sister sub styles that are so closely affiliated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I can like picture all of this in my head and it's all coming together like the look of the look yeah the, <laughs> the look of it sorry i i even have okay. uh, these are some of the outfits that the original choco oh has. wow um, some of the examples over here so I need that <clears throat> and it's colorful as well it's not it's not it's not all ivory um so i, I really like this one whoa oh my gosh the boots oh wow is this a pop it's a pop of color so there with that yellow. It's nice. a, lot, a, lot, a lot of colors. It doesn't have to be, you know, all ivory. No. It can definitely add in your color palettes there. Yeah, I agree with everything that, that she said. Also, um, the natural fabrics as well. Mm -hmm. The more natural, the better. And also, uh, being modest, mo modest, modest. Uh, the fashion is pretty modest itself with all the layering and stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like like she said, the, the layers are very, very important. It just differentiates from all of the other fashions. Because I know that money gets confused with cold, cold party. Um, yes. yes. Even I get confused yes. sometimes because um, I don't know a lot of information. I saw your video about Dory K. And I noticed uh, that they use a lot of like re really rough fabrics like... <laughs> Carpet fabric, or I don't know, <laughs> like furniture mm -hmm. kind of fabric, like, very thick. But they had a lot of things that you know, antique stuff, vintage. And um, Mori also uses that, so that one is can be quite um, confusing. And uh, the other one that I just mentioned <laughs> uh, uses a lot of more synthetic fabrics. Cool, cool party. It's party oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they use a lot of synthetic fabrics and almost white. Um, but in here, in Mori, we use a lot more naturals. Of course, I don't think like they will punish you if you have something synthetic to create the layers. But it's mostly natural materials. Mm, yeah, because when I was doing my research for Cult Party K, like trying to find pictures, oftentimes like the Mori K pictures will be put together with the Cult Party P yeah. Cult Party. Oh my gosh, it's a tongue twister. Cult. <laughs> Hey, wait, party. hold on. Cult Party K. Yes, that's what it was. CPK. I'm like, oh, that kind of looks boring. But I'm like, well, how do you like differentiate both of them? Because you're not impersonating. The makeup. Yeah. Because the I felt I feel like with CPK back then they would wear like the you know a that lot of pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pink and red. Eyes yeah, and they will wear platforms, high platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this, it's yeah. all about the styling, the styling. Yes, because I have a friend who, um, your fashion system on Instagram, and I've been <laughs> Yeah, 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 this is the one I'm thinking about. <laughs> and there are so many things that of her wardrobe mm -hmm. that I would wear, but my styling would be completely different. Mm. So it would be less feminine, or if I can say less sexy, 
if I can say that. Not so much sexy, but more modest, like what Miwako would, would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, sure. with like CPK, we did. I do remember we were talking about how like they would wear like lingerie as like yeah, outerwear. They do. So they do. That could Which be the complete opposite of being modest. Mm. <laughs> I mean, in, <clears throat> they you know they they try to be. They also do layering. It's just that you know it does a lingerie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so you know it's a little bit more obvious to me. <laughs> That's yeah, I think longer, when, right? yeah, when you like, like really <laughs> do research about these styles, you can like really like tell. That's why research yeah. I find is so important when you I'm really want to start getting into yeah. J fashion. And that's when you can kind of differentiate because the vibe is just so different. I think for somebody outside of these fashions, like it could be a little mm -hmm. bit harder and um, there can be some confusion about it. But no, mm -hmm. if you take the time to learn it, it, like you can really, you can see it for sure. And the big question, the the one that we've already kind of talked about a bunch today. <laughs> I can feel it. I can feel it. <laughs> Bring it on. So, Mori K often gets confused with cottage core, <laughs> which has been trending for the past couple of years, especially in online spaces internationally. So. What are the differences between Cottagecore and Mori K? Can I jump right in? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. This is the reason why. This is the reason why I know it's okay. It's a. It's okay to agree to disagree, but this is the reason why I say Mori K is just fashion for me because Cottagecore is a lifestyle. It's an aesthetic to me. Um, and that's what differentiates the two of them for me. If anyone should ask, well, what's the difference? I said, well, one is a fashion statement. It's a style. It's how you dress. And the other one is how you live or mm -hmm. the things that you enjoy doing um, to make it simple, make it short. Can you be more EK and enjoy cottage core? Yes. But I don't... I. I hate to have to say this, but in other words, for example, I'm a Mori K person. I love the style. I wear the style and I live in the country. So now cottage core, my lifestyle has become a cottage core lifestyle. I live in the country. Um, I enjoy different hobbies and stuff that that are incorporated with Mori K, but also mostly with cottage core. So just so that my friends and my family don't get kind of confused with the two. I'm like, listen, Mori K is what I wear. Cottage core is how I live. Mm -hmm. Period. Just so that no one gets confused. Because if other words, if I should start to elaborate on the aesthetic part and how, you know, Mori K can also be aesthetic. And a lot of people around me, for example, would get confused. Like, well, help me make it make sense. And so that's the easiest way that I can explain it. Um, because there is a lot of, aspects of the cottage core lifestyle that is incorporated now into my life but what i wear the way that i look is 100 more okay if that helps to explain it with cottage core you know talking about the lifestyle and the aesthetic the is fashion like not so big of a thing then with cottage core or is it more relaxed I, like i don't I know too much about more relaxed. i would say it's based on like more slow living creating mm. the idea of the scenery and how you live mm. yes there is cottage core fashion but i think it mostly focuses on the lifestyle because mm. when you look at different uh, influencers and content creators who are doing content for cottage core, they're painting a picture to us how to live this cottage core lifestyle. If it's not like food or picnics or a picture of where they live, you see horses, you see the barn, it's creating this ideal slow living life, mm -hmm. this relaxed serenity, the tranquility, the bliss of what it's like living in the country style. And I can literally say where I live, it, it looks exactly the same way, except in my cottage core lifestyle, I'm surrounded by Mennonites. So, yeah, so I, I it, it's, it's literally what I see, like barns and animals <laughs> and Mennonites. I want that. Bunnies. 
I I literally that. caught it correlate. Literally. I, I agree everything that uh Didi said. Um cottage core is an escapist escapism. I that word is just for me. So since COVID happened, uh you know, mental health uh starting to get worse for people. So they wanted an escape to live uh yeah in a countryside, have a farm life. Um uh, and I noticed that it did not have like a fashion, like an image of fashion i like cottage core have always existed in history but it is not the glamorized version that we have today we are only taking the good parts of it and trying to incorporate it in the present we just want to the slow life grow some food <laughs> i want to be by myself with my chickens and <laughs> about, the clothing, <laughs> about the clothing that I, things that i have noted is that it tends to be more romantic elegant and feminine so it accentuates the body uh, with the fitted dresses, corsets. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's showing um, half of shoulder sleeves. And it's also influenced by medieval uh, country maidens. Um, sometimes I also notice maidens from... Maidens, like Edwardian kind of fashion from the 1900s. That's what I have noticed. So Mori in contrast is in terms of fashion is completely the contrast it's not hyper feminine or like you can have a little bit of touches of romantic but it's not all about it mm -hmm. so uh the clothings are not tight the whole body is shapeless it's uh timeless i noticed that yeah since it looks medieval so it, it has this look of on a specific era with mm -hmm. modi it is completely timeless you you combine modern with old clothings um and yeah it's just inspired by northern northern uh europe so i don't know if i explained the biggest differences so yeah and it's just like uh did he say it's more just fashion um yeah i like i live in the city <laughs> i live in the city but i do gardening so mm -hmm. i also share a little i don't have a farm not chicken yet but i <laughs> i have cats so i have cats in my garden so yeah i do my mini i have my mini cottage course love life living here in the city but also where morike so both can exist yeah both. i agree for sure i i think when People try to look up like cottage core outfits, like on Pinterest, they make those little mood boards and stuff. And you'll see like the fast fashion dresses with the flowers on them. So I can kind of see like the difference of how cottage core and Morike look like, you know, for, from the vibes of it, I guess. Uh -huh. Um, but are there any other misconceptions or misinformation about Mori K that you would like to talk about today? So, you know, we talked about the cottage core. We kind of touched on CPK, cult party K. Um, yeah, do you, do you know of any other misconceptions or misinformation? Marianella, do you have any in mind? Yeah, um, I had someone ask me if Mori K was a cosplay. Uh, <laughs> um, Oh. Yeah, like it's just that on Instagram in mm. specific, you see people wearing like elf earrings, ah. and, like they go mm. really fantasy like, like medieval. So, no, <laughs> we are just normal, normal people from the city who wants to dress normal, not normal, uh, comfortable and mm. natural. And I also uh, heard someone on the Discord of um, Discord, someone said that. Mori was um like how do you say this? Like it came from Cottage Square, but they mm. have no relationship at all. And so it's a fashion of its own and it has its own history. Yeah. So and it also that <clears throat> it's not meant to look Lolita fashion. So not too sweet, girly, or hyper feminine. I noticed that this is also like I'm kind of weak on this. Um, I like cute stuff. So I noticed that a lot of people who like Mori K like the cute version that they see on Pinterest. It's just that they, once the magazines started to spread, they kind of made it a little bit more cuter 
than the original idea that Choco had. So a lot of people really like more that version with a lot of fluffiness, like, you know, a lot of um, vintage uh, lace trims with a lot, of, a lot of it. So it's not supposed to look overly sweet like Lolita. That's what I'm trying to say, sweet Lolita. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. What about you, Dee Dee? Um, I haven't, I mean, like I, I, you guys both know now and everyone will know now that I've only entered the Mori K community about a year now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think even for myself, one of the biggest misconceptions that I had to even overcome with myself is that when I first started out in my Mori K journey, that I was stretching, I was actually dressing in natural K and not Mori K. Mm. And I know the two can be confused a lot because of what the online websites can portray or what the Pinterest mood boards can portray. The actual, the, when you go to Google, when you go to Pinterest, they do push natural K first and a lot of um, Yamake. Is it Yamake? Yes, Yamake, where it's like mountain. Yeah. Uh, mountain style and so I was very confused in the very beginning and I actually thought that I was doing right when I was actually doing wrong I was saying I was one style but I was actually dressing another thing and I think a lot of people misunderstand that and natural cake actually has a bigger influence on cottage core fashion than anything else because you get girls who are wearing in like suspender dresses or aprons or it'll just be like a loose fitting like striped shirt and an a-line skirt and that fits I believe more into the cottage core aesthetic than even more <laughs> does, um, to be honest with you. And so a lot of the dresses and what I was wearing, my outfits, what I was wearing in the very beginning of my journey was solely based on that until I found Miwako's page and her YouTube. And I was like, Oh, oh no, I got to delete this. Cause I don't want to misrepresent the style. And a lot of other influencers that I found on Instagram, they were dressing in natural K but their hashtags were Mori K. And so I have to say this, a lot of times when I go to find information or other like content creators on Instagram or YouTube who are using the Mori K hashtag and I go to their page and it has nothing to do with Mori K whatsoever, mm -hmm. not their style, not their fashion, whatsoever. So I know that there are a lot of misconceptions out there what a Mori K person actually looks like and so i think this is a great a great way thank you so much for allowing us to do this interview because it's a great way to kind of get that information out there that there there is a standard of how to look and dress like a mori um and it's not a natural k it's not yamake and it's not hamake those are sub styles of the actual style so those are some of the misconceptions that I've seen, especially when it comes to finding other people who are in the community is using the hashtag and misappropriating the hashtag for sure. Mm, gotcha. Gotcha. I mean, so yeah, we've talked about, well, both of you have sort of talked about like the different sub styles and sister styles just a little <laughs> bit. So I have a list right here. There is um, dark Mori, Mori boy, Hamake, which is ocean style. Yamake, which is mountain style. There's even Mori Gyaru and Natural K. So, yeah. you know, let, let's start with Dark Mori. How is Dark Mori different from Mori K? Dark Mori is more of a Western idea. It's not Japanese. Uh, the, uh, with Mori, you can wear all the colors you know um mm -hmm. but with dark mori they emphasize in wearing the darkest color with still the thing of forest and animals it's just like if you put every everything in monochrome <laughs> you have dark mori so mm -hmm. it's the same it's just layering everything completely the same, the same just darker colors but gotcha. yeah it's not part of the of the original Mori girl it was just created here me actually i i feel that with kind of like a lot of j fashion styles like even with decora there's like all these different like sub styles and they're like pink decora uh or like dark rainbow decora. Decora. yeah rainbow decora <laughs> like all these different sub styles but honestly it's all just like 
you know the the style is so broad you can do whatever you want i feel like mm -hmm. maybe we don't have to be so like ah all these different sub styles you know yeah i go crazy <laughs> so do i <laughs> but that, that's how i i feel about it like we don't have to be so specific you know we can all do our own different interpretations of the and create our own different outfits i think we don't have to you know you know what I mean? <laughs> so no yeah yeah it's just too much especially now since the pandemic there's a lot of oh my gosh fairy core goblin core i don't know core was that whatever core so many cores i just can't i just can't let's continue with the next one so after dark morning we have mori boy <laughs> so simply mori Kay is you know it's for both uh it's just you know the whole name for the whole fashion it just includes everybody mm -hmm. um mori boy is for boys who later became uh started joining the fashion as well they just felt the same as mori girl and also uh also the people who did not really felt like they fitted with the mori girl tag they also went with the mori boy style so more mm -hmm. pants vest uh all of that so yeah that's what it is didn't mori k used to be called like mori girl before they changed it to mori k or i don't know if that's what i mm, i had read somewhere. Uh, okay I, i'm not okay i don't know <laughs> so i i i only know that you know every time i see stuff online i only see mori girl you it's very rare to see Modi boys. I'm also actually doing a, a video about Modi boys. And mm. I've been having to do, I haven't to dig so much to find boys and to, just to find them talking <laughs> about the fashion. Mm. But I only hear them say Modi girl or Modi boy. I don't see the word Modi case. So I don't know if I, this is just me. I don't know if that's just a Western thing. Mm. But I mean, the word K will not exist, <laughs> so I'm really not sure. Yeah, I really want to like look into the whole K thing because I've been really thinking about like the because lately there's been with like core fashions, people will add core to anything, and then with J fashion, mm. I find people will add like K to anything. I've seen people say like Yaru K. I'm like, well, I mean, with Gabby, you don't really need to put K at the end. No, so. you don't need to. And you don't yeah. use also Lolita K. Just so right. So, so I, I don't know when they decide that. I don't know. Like, well, I, I that's why I want to do more research on the whole K thing. Um, I tried asking some people about it, uh, people who can, like, speak Japanese and uh, understand, but uh yeah i don't know that thing the whole k thing i need to look more into it uh what i had meant about like mori girl because uh what i read on like i think j fashion fandom or something like that before it used to be called just like mori that it was mori girl i from my research to be honest with you from my research it was in the beginning called mori girl mm. and mori k came in for you know, everyone wants to be inclusive and share the ah. diversity of the style. Right, yeah, and yeah. Instead of saying Mori girl, we say Mori mm. K now because it's inclusive to everyone. Um, mm. And we don't use the term, yes, Mori boy was, you know, a couple of years ago because it was for gender identifying boys or for males. They wanted to differentiate the style between the girls and the boys. But now I think we've kind of phased out Mori boy and Mori girl and kind of just calls it Mori K mm -hmm. um, because they want to be inclusive to everyone. Right. So yeah, yeah. Saying, that's, the whole, like, the banner that's the best way to everyone. say it. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I, I understand. I got you. Well, <laughs> the other two, the, the rhymey ones, Hamake and Yamake. So ocean style and mountain style, like how are they different from Mori? Co so, you know, Mori forest. Mm -hmm. I feel like I already kind of said it, but this is, this is, uh, this is uh, the. I feel like wow, the whole thing is like Pokemon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Hamake is seashore or ocean style. So that one is also from Japan. It followed the Mori girl fashion, but I mean it got its popularity. But you know I don't think it it was as popular as you know the original Mori. So it's mm. a lot lighter version. It's just 
Uh, you wear lighter clothing, colors that represent more the ocean, pearls, corals, mm. um, any cute <laughs> uh, thing, motif that you can think of of ocean. And I think instead of beige, you usually use more white and light blue, like the ocean. So it's a lot more yeah. lighter. Yeah. Uh, and straw hats, like Didi, straw hats. And yeah, it's just a lighter version of Modi with just the theme of blues, oceans, sea animals. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, yeah. Matthew, uh, I don't know if you have something else to add besides what I said. No, you are spot on. Spot on. It's like a more <laughs> girl going to the beach. In other words, I would put it. Yeah. Which would take yeah off obviously, not years. that many layers because. Not that many layers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You will sink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, Yamake is also uh, is for the mountains. So, that mm. one is for people who do camping and do hiking. The fashion is completely. It's a lot more different than Mori. Like they use outfits that are more practical for the environment. So, mm -hmm. you know, we look very fairy like with all of our cute <laughs> laces and stuff. Don't use that when you're in the forest. You're gonna get, um, it's gonna be a mess <laughs> when you're walking, uh, uh, surrounded with, you know, so many trees and stuff like that. So, you need to wear a, an appropriate. Uh, equipment for that so uh, from ca for camping they they all share for at least for camping they they share the the whole warm colors um slow down town vibe as well but for hiking they wear a more professional equipment with a lot of more neon colors so you could see the person from farther away just in case something happened that's just more professional but yeah i think hamake is more usually seeing as people that do more camping even though that it says mountain but that's just me mm. uh there's even magazines that are about uh jama cable every time i see them they li are literally wearing equipment for yeah. the mountains they are not like dress up this cute you you will not see that because it's uncomfortable and it's not safe so i just yeah. wanted to say that before somebody decided oh i'm gonna be wearing <laughs> Mori girls in the mountain, and then <laughs> I don't want to see somebody go through that. No, yeah, I've seen pictures of like Yamake where they've got those like back the big backpacks yeah. and the shorts and it mm -hmm. the, the vibe. It's so different, but it's I mean vibe. it's so yeah. similar, but also very different. Yeah. You can see yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah. Mo mountain patterns. A lot of very Nordic patterns very wild very ethnic it, I, that's what i noticed more it's more ethnic um ethnic. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more ethnic um what was the word yeah it still has its quirkiness but it's a lot at least, at least a, a lot more bold i guess in terms of colors and patterns a lot more mm. yeah well, we can talk about this like just Real quick, but I had heard that there's like more Yaru, like maybe it's like mixing yeah. both of them together, perhaps. Yeah, I actually kind of experimented with that to be honest in the very beginning of my transition mm. from Yaru to Mori, and it's basically it's really in the the Gyaru comes out in the makeup. Mm. The Gyaru mm. makeup is, is very bold. It's in your face. Um, I still wear my circle lenses. And for Mori K, you really don't do that. That's one of the things on the checklist that they don't do to give this dolly eyed feature on the face. But I'm still wearing mines, not only because <laughs> I got the dolly eye, but because they're prescription based as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't see anything. Um, but yeah, and. Um, the lashes, like the, the exuberant lashes, you know, with Gyaru, they wear big top lashes, bottom lashes. They mm -hmm. do the eye droop, um, the eye bag. And we ha Gyaru's have like the signature white line in mm -hmm. their, the Q picks up their eyes. And so that itself would be the Gyaru part wearing Mori clothing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in my, in my first couple of weeks transitioning, I did it. Now, in my last couple of years, you can see I still have like the big lashes and stuff like that. 
but I've taken them off because I'm trying to stay true to the Maury K brand as much as possible. I miss them, but it's not Maury. Gotcha. Yeah, I, yeah, I also think, I think, I don't know if I'm wrong, but I think I saw, um, how do I say this? Gyaru clothing, like they will layer, but just like Gyaru wear, uh, like more shorter, like shorter skirts, just like they always do, but with yeah. a lot of uh, um, forest themes. It, it looks like Maori. It's just that, you know, short skirts, short, short pants, mm. <laughs> but with a lot of makeup and their, and their signature hair. It did not last that very long. It was no. going quick. Well, with uh, Natural K, so, you know, we talked a little bit on mm -hmm. that. So, you know, you can see, see in the word already, the natural. Yeah. yeah. How... Is it different then from Maury? Less layers. I Less would layers. actually say no layers in natural K. But the shape, loose fitting A line is the same. The fabrics are the same. The textures are the same. The styling, the makeup is the same, but without the multiple layers is the best way that I would describe it. Mm, I, I have a different, um, similar, but different explanation mm. so uh, from what i read or from what i know uh natura k is the westernized name that it was given to a fashion that wasn't very well known and it was very confused with morike and lolita so the name is really otome which is oh. uh, it's been very popular since the 70s and it's still popular today but uh, it had a lot of variety of styles, but the one that stood out the most was uh, Pink House. Wow. I don't even know if you've seen Pink House clothing, but they, they do look like, actually, I feel like Pink House looks a lot more cottage square than anything else. So uh, it, it's also said that they are the pre predecessors of Lolita Fashion, but I am not 100% sure if it's true. But it's been there since the 70s. And um, so it kept elements of Lolita fashion with the whole, um, I guess, I don't know if I should say it ladylike, mm. um, but more adult, mature looking um, with a lot of animals and forest stuff, flowers, element that Mori has as well. And it's also uh, conservative, I mean, modest. Eh? Mm. <laughs> it's modest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. And the one that stood out the most is Pink Hat, which is still very popular. Okay. Um, so every time you think of Natural K, you will probably be thinking about Pink House. Mm. So, yeah. That's interesting because I feel like I still see people wear Otome fashion. Mm -hmm. um, like if you see on the using the hashtags, though yeah. I've also heard from people that like Otome also means another thing, which is something it's having perfect. to do with like otaku or something like that. I can't remember what exactly, I but thought, mm, uh, yeah, I'm kind of like rem remembering. I've been mm. <laughs> learning a lot of these past days. I think the whole Otome name was given right after um, the otaku stuff started happening. I think that's mm. why. That's I think that's what I remember that I read yesterday. That's what that's when the name was given. But I am not completely sure. Yeah, but, yeah, and also the there's many styles of fashion. Um, some of them even look a lot more cottage core, like uh, Annie, like um, uh, Auntie Gables. Ah, uh, yeah. Gables. Um, so oh, it has a lot of England and um, French kind of cottage vibe. So that's why I said like if it's more or it looks a little bit more with the whole idea of the country girl looking with the aprons and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, it just have a, a lot of the ruffles like Lolita, but with the cute patterns, um all the other stuff of Pony. Mm. <laughs> it's very, it's very yeah, you can use uh, a lot of their pieces um to layer. But yeah, just, they just have a lot of ruffles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pink house. <laughs> Didi, did you have something to say about Otome fashion earlier? I was, but um, Wacko just kind of said it. But because at first, um, the crisscross between natural K and Otome fashion—that was that was one of the looks 
for some of the looks that I was experiencing in my Maury K journey in the very early on. So mm. like the dresses, the signature looks of Maury of um, Otome fashion, you would see like a sailor collar or the Peter Pan collar with the apron dress. Mm. Um, so it's past the ankle. You might have a little bit of like a trim of a flare or um, some mm. tool for, for like the, the texture and the material of the outfit. And so- Petticoat. Yeah, yeah. And and so a lot, I remember it was one comment that my mom actually made. It's like, you look like Anne from Green Gables. You look like someone from the prairie. And I was like, no, that means yeah. I have wrong. <laughs> so that's how I started attributing the differences between natural K, Atome fashion, and Mori K, because sometimes they can be mixed up and confused and I really had to study really hard to see the differences in the style because when you go to go by you may not be able to tell the difference unless you do your research so that's what I just wanted to add mm. Mm. yeah yeah oh my gosh I'm learning so much but I took those pictures <laughs> off of my Instagram though <laughs> oh no <laughs> I took them off I took them off they were totally natural K and I told my fashion totally I not feel like it. It, if Big House wasn't so expensive, I will be yeah. wearing it. Like, yeah. I tried to buy a second hand and was like, oh. <laughs> it's just like buying something new from a Lolita store. Mm. And I was like, you know, you're beautiful, but stay there. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep finding stuff on the strip store because. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Well, with. Well, let's go back to just Maury K. So, Maury K, you know, we've talked about it. It's definitely o evolved over time. Um, well, mm -hmm. I mean, we kind of answered this. Yeah. Are there still many people who wear it? Would you say that there are still many people who participate and wear the fashion of Maury K? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, I think. The people that know the most that Morike exists are here on the West. In Japan, there's actually a lot of people that don't even know what Morike is. Um, so it, it died quite a lot, but there's uh, a current fashion. So after Mori died, uh, you know, Japanese people have always used like natural fabrics. They are pretty into natural stuff. So there's a lot of people, especially older women, but still young women as well, that dress more, the, the style is called more natural linen. So they are more A-lines, silhouette as well. It has way less layering, way less textures going on. It's focused mo mostly on just wearing linen. And sometimes they actually just wear brands like Samantha Moss. That is one of the brands that it was very popular with Muddy Girl. It's still popular with within the Muddy Girl people. So the, it's pretty toned down, like uh, on bleach materials, um, linen materials. It is more mature. and uh, It's more about sustainability and simplicity. I'm glad to hear that a lot of people are still into Mori K and I hope through this video that perhaps it'll inspire some people to try out the style as well. Um, and for those watching, you know, I know some people might have the question of can anyone wear Mori K? Like, do you feel like it's a pretty accessible fashion? So regardless of someone's gender, their size, their age, you know, if somebody were wanting to get into it, do you feel like anyone can wear Mori K? Absolutely. I think Mori K now is now that we're like dealing with post pandemic is easily accessible by thrifting mm. for all of those who love thrifting. Yes, you can find pieces that you can work with easy. Um, even online, there's so many different, if you know what you're looking for, you have to know mm -hmm. what you're looking for first because you can get not only lost in the rabbit hole, but you can get confused really, really easily and easily slip into the other sister sub styles, like what happened to myself. So I think if you know what you're looking for and you have like something imprinted in your mind, like you're building outfits as you go and you think about, this is what I want to do. I say anyone, doesn't matter your gender, your size, your body shape, where you live, doesn't even matter. I think if you live in a, 
a colder climate is even better. Like for me right now, when it gets hot, it gets a little bit kind of tricky, right? Me wacko. Okay, it, gets it. Really warm. it gets a little bit tricky with the layers. But when it's nice and cool, like right now, it's really mm -hmm. nice and cool in Canada. Mm -hmm. Layering is like a dream. I don't have to wear a coat, but I can wear my dresses. I can wear tops. I can wear skirts. I can wear a nice scarf and I can wear my hat and I can go out the door. No problem. Um, so I say more. I wish more people would get involved in this stuff because it's so easy, especially if you live in the country. But even if you don't, if even if you live in the city, I think it's a great way to um, get away from like loungewear and you can wear more cape instead of wearing mm. loungewear. Not that I have yeah. a problem with loungewear, just saying. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I feel uh, the same. Uh, everybody can wear it. It doesn't matter the age, even though it started with people around college. Uh, it was very liked by um, housewives or mm. mothers. So it, it was so comfortable. So, you know, everybody can wear it. Boys are included as well. They join the party. <laughs> and also, yeah. <laughs> Since Depop's existed, Poshmark, I have found so many things, like all the things that I wasn't able to find when I live in Puerto Rico. So yeah, it just opened the door for me, like so huge. I feel like right now, most of the stuff that I have are second-handed. This is second-handed, except for the necklace and mm. this, but this too, whether I uh, bought this from Japan, secondhand, and this one is from Depop. So there's a lot of things, and you really need to know. You need to understand, like, again, check the checklist, check the color palette, check everything before you buy, and be sure what you need to buy because you're going to be there forever. Like, online shopping, it's forever. <laughs> and, forever. <laughs> and remember that this is just a, a personal style. So again, it's personal, so everybody should be um, allowed to express themselves. Mm, absolutely. Since we're on the topic of, you know, secondhand shopping and Depop Poshmark, uh, if somebody were wanting to, like, look up secondhand brands, like Mori K brands, like the OG Mori brands, like... Do you know what mm. some of those brands are that people can try looking up? Yeah, uh, the first brand that everybody kind of knows is Wonder Rocket, which mm. is the, I think it was the first or the first ones that started releasing a lot of muddy clothing. Then we have Kawaii with the C. <laughs> those oh. are the clothing that you see a lot on Pinterest. Also, Favorite is another one uh, that right now only focus on cosplay. But they used to also make a lot of Mori outfits. That ones are very popular also on Pinterest. You have Earth Music and Ecology. It's I think it still exists. I think <laughs> it just sells natural stuff. Francelipe, they sadly, before the pandemic, they closed. But they wear a lot of, they used to make a lot of um, prints. Very, very, very cute. And you have Samantha Moss, which is very uh present <laughs> there's a lot of money girls that used to buy the cloth in there and they still wear it today but like i mentioned the natural style today is a lot more simple but you still have those designs like didi has uh with embroidery here embroidery there it's just you just need to know how to layer it to look more a little bit more wild and mm -hmm. <laughs> you also have bellissimo which is one of the favorite shops the Mori used to like it, Felicimo syrup, syrup, like syrup. Mm. <laughs> and I see one on the magazine that is called Boule de Savon. I don't know how you say it. Boule de Savon. Um, I don't know a lot about that brand, but I noticed that they also uh, were mentioned a lot on the magazines. Uh, Kushia as well was mentioned a lot. And Dearly from China, uh, that one is already, you know, it was popular back then, but they completely changed. They are not completely the same. They changed, they changed yeah. their name and now they are a lot more cottage core. Runs today, you have still Samantha Moss. Uh, you can find it as NSM2 because um yeah I, I don't know why the whole name uh you have encasopo i don't know if encasopo was back then 
but it exists today. This dress is from Encasopo. Uh, you have, I, I will say you have Axe Femme, Axe Femme, mm, even uh, though it yes. goes a little bit more Himeguiano, I guess it was. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how. They have a lot of patterns that are floral here and there. You can incorporate uh, from other brands and other fashion as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Mercury, uh, Mercury Japan, and Yahoo Action Japan, which is where I got this. <laughs> um, you have Taobao, which uh, that's where uh, I also started buying uh, from online. Taobao slash AliExpress. Taobao has a lot of unique modi shops like I will say a unique, but like real shops, <laughs> original shops. So they're not just drop shipping shops. Mm. Um, and there's a brand called Blue Hat, which is pretty popular. It, they're replicas. Um, wait, yeah, I think they're replicas. I, I just forgot if they're replicas or they are their own thing. It's just that you cannot find information about, about them. Locally, you have three stores, which is the is going to be the cheapest option. I'm mean, just gonna tell you that. Uh, you have Etsy, where you can find clothing. Is where I've been finding clothing recently, but it's more expensive because it's upcycled. So mm -hmm. if you can find for upcycled pieces, handmade, you're gonna pay a little bit more, but at least you're gonna have something unique and you know it's recyclable, recyclable, recycle. <laughs> and you have well. Tip up, Poshmark, Aliexpress, Taobao. If you if you have a um, oh my gosh, the name. If you have an agent, if you don't, you have Aliexpress, which have a lot of drop shipping sh drop shipping item from Taobao. Yes. And um, clothing and accessories can be found within a lot of different fashions, like Gyaru, Lolita. Um, that has a similar uh, thing going on. Like country Lolita, you also have a lot of floral things you can <laughs> get from them. And um, yeah, that's about it. That's how I've been looking so far for money stuff. Thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. That is like Whoa, a plethora a of like places. Oh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if you got everything. I just fixed speak too fast <laughs> whoa that was massive yeah that was great thank you so much like i think if somebody were wanting to get into it they can definitely they have a lot to uh uh -huh. look through that they can check out but uh well didi if somebody wants to try getting into mori do you have any advice on how they should start since you know you're pretty brand new too and they want to try out too you know where can they look up information to learn more about it like if there are resources websites to meet other more k lovers like a discord or something but yeah how should people start getting into it um number one i would suggest that they um start looking at their wardrobe of what they have in their wardrobe. I think with any J fashion, that is the first place that anyone should look is what do you have already in your wardrobe? And instead of going to Google, um, I went to Google and I was mis I was misled down different paths that, you know, I ended up spending money on things that have nothing to do with the style. I would, I have to suggest Miwako has an amazing YouTube page, um, has accurate information i think that any individual who's ready to start to dress mori should get a pen and get a piece of paper or not even a piece of paper get a notebook because it's a lot of information and start taking notes before you even buy anything so first start in your wardrobe start looking at items that you want to take out or that you want to use and then hit to youtube instead of google and you can either listen or watch and get accurate information. I think that's very important before you start buying things. Um, if the individual is in Canada, Taobao is not available to us in Canada or it's not available to Canadians. Mm. Um, so the best place I would suggest to go is on AliExpress. Depop, I'm not really, I know you can find stuff on Depop, but Man, some people can, you know, really skyrocket prices on there for items. Oh, it's just my not gosh. Fair. Yeah. It's really not fair. So I would say just go straight over to AliExpress 
give yourself a time frame of when you want to start implementing, you know, your new pieces into your wardrobe and, and learn, like take some time and educate yourself. I would say, take your time, educate yourself, put a nice budget together, invest in like Mori magazines. If you can, Mori magic is now available and I'm going to be getting that in a printed copy version as well. Oh, yay. Yes. And I want to have other volumes as well that, you know, teaches primarily now about the fashion. Now that volume one has given like an introductory on the fashion, volume two, three, four, five, and six, or however many volumes we can come up with will be primarily about shopping, where to shop, what pieces to get, and how to build your more, more wardrobes and get lots of models like Miwako to feature outfits on there. Um, but yeah, that's how I would I would recommend getting started in Mori mm. and making like go out into your neighborhood and finding your thrift stores. Look for crochet, look for lace, look for loose fitting items. And I think one thing that we didn't mention is um, having a really nice tote bag, um, having a nice you know, sack of a tote bag, whether it's crossbody or over the shoulder, I think is very necessary to the Mori um, outfit or the Mori collection of things that you want to incorporate for your Mori wardrobe. I think a good bag is good to have, like a nice big tote bag where you can throw everything in Chunky. there. You can usually find like, better. like <laughs> Dollar Tree or Dollarama, whatever you have, wherever you live. They always have like those big pill sack totes where you can find like an owl on it or like birds on it or like a Scandinavian or a Nordic print on there. I think that's important to have. Oh, the owls. Oh, is that the tote bag you were talking yeah. about? Yeah. It's very quirky. It's yeah. so cute. And I got this at my dollar store. Dollar That's Street. from the dollar store? It's from the dollar store. Oh, my God. That's, yeah. very cute. That's such a good find. Right? Such a good find. Yeah. You can find those at like your any thrift store too. Mm. If, you know, you want to find something that's quirky, like Miwako likes to say, something that has, you know, some character, or it might have like some Scandinavian print, whether it be like a crossbody bag, mm. or it might even be leather. But I wouldn't suggest like a brand new leather bag, but something that's been beaten up with some scratches on it. You know, something that can bring out some character. I think mm. is really nice. Mm -hmm. Or you might even be able to find like um, a basket bag. Basket bags are really nice as well, too, to match your basket hat. Like mine. <laughs> yeah, those are, that's really, really great advice. Yeah. Miwako, if somebody were wanting to look up information, you know, like websites, like accurate information, mm. stuff like that, do you have places or even like, I think you mentioned like a Mori Discord. Is there more Discord? Uh, yeah, we're not that many. Mm. Uh, but it's still alive. <laughs> we are just sharing our outfits there. You need an invite, but you know, uh, I can invite people if if you if anybody wants. I'm not the um manager, but I I can invite people. But the place where you're going to find most of the information is honestly Forest and Tea. She, I, I even was speaking to her yesterday because I wanted to be completely sure that I was accurate, confirmed mm. about the date. I don't want to spread misinformation. Um, yeah, we talk a lot. She has been archiving a lot of information and updating pretty uh, frequently. Uh, she hasn't done anything very, very recently, but I think... She, that is the only blog that I really can recommend because I don't know anybody else who is like really making a content on Mori besides Didi and um, maybe me now. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, and there's a Facebook page as well, but it uh, is not that active. And I don't barely use Facebook. I, I, I completely forget that, they, that, they, that there's a group there. <laughs> I, I guess Discord is a lot more easier just to interact, you know. Mm. Sometimes we share uh, resources 
of scan magazines or just we share shops. We tend to do a lot of win uh, window shopping is how you call it. So we are always sharing like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. <laughs> and then we, mm. we try to share and see uh, if anybody's interested and, you know, have, a, have fun. Just have yeah. fun. It, it sounds so nice to hear. I mean, it's so nice to hear that the more community is so supportive of each other oh, and wow. sharing all of this information with each other, you know, getting the honor and the chance to talk to the both of you today has been so lovely. I can really feel the love that the both of you have for Mori. So again, I'm so honored, but I'd love to know, you know, for the both of you, ah! <laughs> well, what do you love about Mori K and how has it positively affected your life? So Didi, let's start with you. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm, as you said, I knew you were going to ask me to speak for us and I'm <laughs> My best to like gulp down my emotions because um, it's something that I, I speak about all the time, my transition from Gyaru to Mori and their polar opposites, right? And um, I know a lot of people ask me, you know, why did you leave the Gyaru community and how did you find Mori? And the funny thing is, the truth of the matter is, is that not a lot of the J fashion communities can be filled with not nice people unfortunately, right? A lot of the J fashion communities is filled with competition, you know, slander, bullying and stuff like that. And that's the main reason why I left the Gyaru community. Uh, it was very overwhelming for me to deal with the negativity. And even though I love the style so much, I was like, even if I just did it on my own, it wasn't gratifying enough because I felt like when you're in J fashion, you want to be with your community, you want to have friends, you want to be able to talk. Like I bug me wacko all the time and I like message her and check up on her. And I, I love the community aspect of it. I really do. And so leaving Gyaru and my whole life changed. I just, I was tired of the city living, tired of the busy lifestyle. Um, I worked in the fashion industry for 16 years. And even that I walked away from my career mm. and I told my husband, I'm like, I'm over it. I'm done. I hate this. I want something new. And no one expected me to move to the country, but an opportunity presented itself. We moved to the country and it's really country, like really, really country. And I was like, well, I still want to participate in J fashion. What am I going to do now? Like, I can't be very kind countryside. Like, and people are going to really look at me weird out here. And cosplaying is only every so often. And I was talking to um, one of my other friends on Instagram. And I said to her, you know, I'm, I'm looking for different things to play around with. And she had mentioned, um, she had mentioned to me Maury. And I said, Maury, what's Maury? And I started going to look into it. And I found some information on it, wasn't exactly correct. But then shortly after I found Miwako's YouTube. And I said, this is going to perfectly fit into my lifestyle. I couldn't be happier. And I think I watched one video and I went and creeped and found Miwako on Instagram. And I messaged her right away, thanking her for her videos. I was commenting on all her videos. I went and liked all her pictures. Aww. And you know just building the community with her and some other uh ladies and women who are mori k it was so easy it was absolutely effortless the information that was being shared in other j fashion communities information is not easily shared they tell you go do it yourself go find the information yourself oh sorry i can't tell you but like Miwako, she shared with me Depop, she shared with me Taobao. She was so generous and I got the same experience from other people in the Mori K community as well. And it's been a complete tremendous blessing for me because my whole life slowed down and I wanted to continue to participate in the J fashion community and where I live now and what I do for my life as a homemaker and as an entrepreneur, it just fits so perfectly into my lifestyle. And I couldn't be more happier to find Mori K. So thank you, Miwako. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> oh, wow. That was so deep. I also have a very deep feeling um, with Mori K. Um, I've 
first I started more with kawaii. Uh, I still love cute stuff. Like I have, my room is pink and I have plushies <laughs> and all that stuff. But I was feeling really, really fatigued and anxious with the fashion. I did not make a lot of friends, but I, di I did fail the competition. I haven't told this a lot, but I did, I did felt it. And I did not feel very supportive. Like, I don't know, I, I did have my, you look cute, this is very cute. But I don't know, I don't want to complain. But yeah, I just, it, yeah, th that happened. <laughs> but with Marike, I just feel like it's a reflection of myself. Like it makes me feel calm, safe, mm. and it's, very comfortable <laughs> and that uh, yeah. have known that very well with my autism sensory issues um i i cannot stand a lot of polyester <laughs> um, yeah and just what is in fact uh just too comfortable uh so impact in my life has been better because i started noticing more things about myself that i have forgotten it's like reviving reviving my own younger self and experiencing again but with an adult mind and it made me care a lot more about my surroundings uh, surroundings and made me explore and engage with more things uh consider slow living it has helped me tremendously with my anxiety and depression, especially since the pandemic. Um, I always live in an apartment, always. Uh, so I did not spend a lot of time outside growing up. I was very sheltered. Mm. So I literally touched some grass. <laughs> <laughs> He helped me touch some grass. So that's how I feel. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, I dude, I'm tearing up right now. Like that was <laughs> that was very beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I wow, my heart. I'm so touched. Wow. Oh my gosh, I wow. I like so much happiness in yeah. my body right now. Like this has been such an amazing conversation like i so so honored to get to talk to both of you today but before you go do you have any last words of encouragement for the viewers watching this video so you know people who might feel like they're not super confident or kind of insecure like what um yeah somebody who has been wearing experimenting with fashions all throughout these years do you have like encouraging words for them i say keep going j mm -hmm. fashion is for everyone and anyone don't let anyone discourage you from doing what makes you feel happy concerning your fashion your appearance it's you it's 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 your identity stamp when people look at you they get to understand who you are by how you dress yourself and so if j fashion makes you happy then wear J fashion. Don't let anyone discourage you. Don't even discourage yourself. I think a lot of times when it comes to J fashion, our biggest enemies can be ourselves. Oh, I don't think I'm doing it right. Oh, I don't think I'll fit in or, or I'm not wearing the right pieces or I'm not styled properly. Get out of your own self thought and don't beat up on yourself. Um, enjoy what you do and love doing what you do best. And if J fashion happens to be that, then do it. And, and secondly, find someone that you feel that you can relate to. And there are positive people in every J fashion community. Don't let that discourage you. If you've, if you've had an instance where, you know, someone negatively um, demotivated you, don't let that be your final thought. Like there are positive people like myself and like cyber girl and like me and there's plenty of others in the j fashion community who love j fashion i will never stop wearing j fashion they're gonna have to bury me if i die <laughs> in some j fashion so it is what it is this is who we are it's what we love and i say do <clears throat> what you love because it's gonna make you happy you are in charge of your own happiness mm -hmm. i got the perfect <laughs> that was very you. nice to say I, I, yeah, just like Didi say, really take it easy. It's a process. Ask questions. Um, I am taking um, notes for future videos as well. I'm listening. It's just like I have a full-time job. So mm -hmm. it takes 
a long time to make a video. Um, obviously, keep experimenting. Never be afraid of that. There's endless combinations. So I don't know if that's positive or negative, but there's endless combinations to see. And um, you know that remember that Mori Girl is about you being comfortable in your own skin and be at your own pace, if I should say. Uh, you don't need replicas. You don't need replicas to look like a Mori Girl. You probably have a lot of pieces that are natural already in your closet. You just need to know how to layer everything and just add those natural and foresty like elements. Um, like I, I mentioned many times, Scandinavian, especially elements to make it uh, work. There's a lot of, um, there's a mix of modern and old things from three stores like it's not it's not all brand um yeah on the magazine you can see people just wearing play t-shirts but the way they, they style it they add a lot of texture it makes it look like a whole new thing so mm -hmm. yeah um that's i think that's what i had to say the essence of money k is based on the creativity of collecting thing collecting things that you'll that you like that makes you feel comfortable and true to yourself Ooh, perfect thank you well if somebody were to want to you know look up your videos later for all of this information do you miwako do you have anything that you'd like to promote or social media pages where people can support and follow you yeah i just have my youtube page i think you can find me with miwako if not I think my username, my hype, my hyperlink is VK Lolita. <laughs> I, I've been using that. And on uh, Instagram, you can find me with Miwako underline VK Lolita as well. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's the only two platforms that I'm mm. really using. I don't have a TikTok, but yeah, that's what <laughs> you can awesome. join. Thank you. And what about you, Didi? Do you have any socials? I do. So you can find me at. Very easy, Kayoko on Instagram, Tumblr, and Pinterest. I have tons of mood boards for beginners who love Mori K. Yeah, I actually have a Pinterest, I forgot, but it's been private. But if I have enough stuff to share, I, I can also put that layer just... But right now, I'm just like putting stuff for my crochet <laughs> uh, future project, you know, incognito mode. So, but yeah. I can share later. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you both again so, so, so freaking much for today. I appreciate the both of you. Uh, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much again to both Marianella and Didi. I will have both of their links linked down below but i'd love to know your thoughts about mori k in the comments below have you ever worn the style or have you ever been interested in wearing the style or now do you want to get into it I want to know. <laughs> Please remember that we want this to be a place for everyone to be able to have healthy discussions with one another by being more open-minded, critical, and empathetic. So please be kind to one another. But thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate if you could give it a like and subscribe. I'll see y'all in the next video. So take care and bye-bye.